Hi, it's Nicole. So I think the plan today is that we're going to go to Hebden Market and um, I'll try to take some video and see what that's like. Uh, Hebden Market is in a place called Hebden Bridge, which is, I think, a cute little town um, in the Calderdale Valley. Um, and I think it's pretty arty and stuff, so that should be kind of interesting. Um, as far as my reading goes, I haven't finished a lot of books, even though I've kind of been dipping into a fair few. But I did finish At Night All Blood is Black, and I thought that was a really good book. I think I'd like to do a proper review of it, but then at the same time I don't know that I'd have loads and loads to say. Things that stood out to me, though, is that I wondered, even though that is... Um, from a Senegalese author and the characters are Senegalese in World War II fighting the Germans. I feel like, so this is not a spoiler to say, I think it's just said on the back of the book that the character goes um, across enemy, li <laughs> the character grow go <laughs> The character goes across enemy lines and he kills one of the enemy and takes back their hand to his side as kind of a trophy. And I wondered if that was in a way somehow a reversal and reference to King Leopold II who was in Congo, not in Senegal, and who was Belgian, not um, German, but he tended to mutilate people in the Congo um, for not meeting rubber quotas um, and he was a really awful cruel guy and I wonder if that was somehow referencing that. I think if it were to be referencing that, that's kind of interesting. Um, and I wondered what else I might be missing in references if you know, if it had a lot of that kind of thing through it. And although, so I listened to the book on audiobook. I thought it was well performed. I thought the story was um, really engaging and stuff. But at the same time, I could also see how that could definitely be taken as uh, a story that, mm, maybe this is spoilers. I'm going to put a little thing saying spoilers on the screen. But um, I can definitely see how that whole book could also be interpreted as basically an overall message about like, one guy being sad that he his friend wasn't able to get laid before he died and that's kind of um it feels like it reduces all of the depth and interest in that story to something a little bit lame and kind of um essentially just a sexist sort of uh, kind of story so i think it could probably be read both ways um but i think overall i did enjoy the story and so you know, I'm going with that. So that was this month, April, and I think in March I finished um, a book by Thomas Sankara, who, um, who was briefly the leader of Burkina Faso uh, before being assassinated, and that was really good. It was about his uh, feminist um, plans for Burkina Faso, in, in essence. Um, I, at some points, particularly during the beginning, I had issues with what seemed to be a gender deterministic kind of speaking, as though all women are innately like this and that, and um, they have this mothering impulse and whatever, I don't know, things like that, and I felt like there was a bit of that, and then later on he kind of dispelled that and explained that that's not what he meant, uh, but then later on again we would see a bit more of that language creeping in and so I feel like that was kind of probably just part of the time that it was it was written um, but I also think that it was pretty advanced for the time that it was written considering that you know he would have been in a very hyper masculine society I think um, and I and overall I thought it was a really good um, book and it made me really sad that very often these revolutionaries um, are killed quite young, especially when it's these very compassionate, strong black men um, through history that you see being assassinated uh, so young. It's just, it, it feels really just sad and frustrating. Um, and then on that note, um, I also watched Judas and the Black Messiah and that was such a good film. I thought it was it was really good. Made me look more into the history of Fred Hampton a little bit. I'd like to look a lot more. If you have any recommendations talking about Fred Hampton or the Black Panthers or any of the major people involved that you should know about, just drop them down below. Let me know because that's something that I'm really curious about. 
I don't really know a lot about, I think I don't know enough about black history in general, but I don't really know very much about um, American black history, even though that's the thing that is like everyone knows about, it takes over the whole world. Um, I don't really feel like I know much about any of the principal characters beyond, say, Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, and even those two people I don't know loads about. Um, so any recommendations you have for me on that front, I definitely would like to hear from you. I'm still slowly getting through uh, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney, and I, I, I'm i having a weird time with this book because I find it difficult to get through, I find it a little dry, I find it um, difficult to want to go back to, but I also am finding it incredibly informative. So it's not as engaging as his book The Groundings with My Brothers, which I think is a much easier recommend than this one. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it is informative um, and I just feel like it's a little bit dry and I think that he could probably do with, um, to make this more um, engaging and accessible, he could probably have done with having a clear narrative through line or something to connect all of the parts, all of these histories and stuff, though I think that would be difficult, I don't know um, if you would be essentially losing a lot of the detail by turning it into some sort of more narrative non-fiction or something, I don't know, but it it does feel a lot like reading a textbook, <laughs> so uh, that's been a bit tricky, but I'm about four hours from the end of the audiobook now, I think it is nine hours in total or something, so around halfway through. That was actually supposed to be my book for Guyana for Invisible Cities, which I think was February. So I'm a little behind on that. I say behind because, you know, for the uh, Invisible Cities schedule, uh, I am behind. And then I was thinking as well a lot about my Invisible Cities engagement and how it's been a little tricky for me, especially recently. It's been a little bit difficult for me to keep up with the reading for Invisible Cities. And so I've started to kind of shift how I want to involve myself in the project and it's going to be more um, cinema. So I'm going to be uh, watching a lot of movies for all of the different countries if I can. If I can't find movies that are done um, by uh, citizens from our countries, then I'll be looking at documentaries about the countries if I can find that. Um, and obviously I'll still be trying to, you know, find books from these countries as well. But my main focus is going to be shifted towards film. And I think that could be fun having a lot more of that sort of uh, involvement directly in the project because you know, we always talk about how these other ways of engaging are equally as valid as the reading part of it. Um, even though, you know, it's through booktube and book blogs and stuff like that. So, so the reading has always been what we've more so emphasized. But I think I would like to help bring up that cinema thing uh, as well. And what's been helping me a lot with that actually has been Mubi. I think it was Agnes who had mentioned Mubi in the first place and was saying it was really good and so I checked that out because that's free with Scribd and I really love it. The, the films that they have on there, the catalogue is really good. Um, I like the information that's on there as well. They have articles and things like that. It's kind of interesting. I love how they have their collections. So there are lists for, for example, films by women, directed by women, or um, for like different country uh, essential watching lists and things like that so that's been kind of fun to look through so um on that note there's now a bit of a super casual film club um on the discord for invisible cities so if you want to join in on that then just go check out the discord um maybe at me or something and i can add you to the film club and then if you want to like leave cinema club just let me know i can just you know take you off of that if you don't want to be part of it anymore but um yeah i thought that would be fun we had our first um proper uh, film watch with a few people and it was really interesting to be able to chat with people throughout the film and you know hear what other people had to say and what things it reminded them of or what um, topics came up or what other books came to mind and things like that i'm gonna be trying to host a few more of those and obviously if anyone else wanted to host uh, like a film night or a film day, whatever film session uh, over at the Discord, you absolutely can. Um, but yeah, that's my update for Invisible Cities. I think 
Um, I'll see you again later today after we go to Hebden Market. Last week I started a bit of a vlog thing that was supposed to be covering my mid-month book bash activity um, and I failed massively at that but I talked a lot about some books that I was um, getting through so I think I'm going to put that um, footage in there but I mentioned going to the Hebden Bridge um, market and I said I was going to film that but I ended up not filming it because we missed most of it basically um, which is a shame but you know it happens. Anyway today I'm just going on a little walk. When we were living in Saltaire, the Hurstwood Park, which is the one that was closest to my house, was really nice and so I was hoping to find somewhere near me that was also really nice for going on forest walks and stuff like that. So I'm exploring this one and so far I really love it. It's a lot bigger than the Hurstwood Park that I'm used to from Saltaire. At the moment, I'm trying to get to the end of uh, The Psychology of Money, which is a really interesting book actually. It's not like one of those um, I guess typical finance feeling books. It's a lot more about how we think about money and our psychology around money and I find that really interesting because I think it expands outwards beyond money and more to your just general life philosophy, how risk averse you are in general, um, not just with your money, how you think about your securities, um, independence, um, how you weigh up different things and make different types of choices. Um, all of that was really interesting. There's a lot I could say actually about that book and I might make a proper review for that later or you know just talk about it a lot more properly in a wrap up but I'm about 90% into that so I'm probably gonna finish it today uh, and uh, oh a little robin. Oh he's so cute. I wonder if I can... no he's gone now. <laughs> oh well. I started um, Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree, by which I mean I think I read maybe the first few paragraphs and um, I wasn't disliking it for sure, but I was just a lot more drawn to starting, um, w what is it, Men Without Women or something like that. Um, Anyway, I started that one. I got through the first chapter and I just really want to continue with that one. But um, Enlightenment of the Green, Green Gauge Tree is a buddy read and so I really need to start on that one because I think Stephanie's loving it, which is making me want to hurry up with that. But she's a lot faster at reading than I am, so I don't know, I'll see if I catch up. just got back from my walk and I finally found my tripod so hopefully my videos will be a little bit less shaky now and I came home to some mail and it is the Invisible Cities uh, group read for May so in May we're going to be all reading this together for uh, Ukraine um, particularly in light of you know what's happening in Ukraine right now I think it's a very timely read and then I got for myself this little book because I'm trying to shape it for my meals with some more interesting um, things. So yeah, that should be fun. The other day I actually recorded a bit of me talking about the films that I've been watching for Invisible Cities Project, but I think I'm going to put that in a separate structured video and just leave this as a kind of semi-scattered vlog of me just chatting about random books and some clips of my walk through the park and stuff like that. Um, and I'll just leave this off here. So I hope you're having a good day. 
um, it finally is starting to feel like spring which is really nice. If you're reading anything interesting right now I'm always curious and I think I'd asked earlier for some recommendations for any books on like Black Panthers or Fred Hampton or you know any interesting key uh, people of that time. Um, and if you have any other books that you think that I would just be interested in based on other things that I've been talking about, then absolutely leave that down below in the comments as well, because all of that stuff's really interesting to me, even though I probably won't get around to a lot of it for a while because I'm slow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I really appreciate that. Anyway, I'll see you again next time. Bye!